<laughs> okay, Roy Kirchhoff's here. Today we're going to do Marshall photo oils, use Marshall photo oils again on photo paper. Um, but today we have Jonathan here. Hi, I'm Jonathan Simon. I live in Poway. I'm an artist and today I'm learning from Roy. Yeah, we're going to have a look at um, how to color some of his images. So this is Jonathan's image. You tell us a little bit about it. So the whole idea behind this project is taking pictures from Poway. This is a picture from a hike at Lake Poway from the top. There's a little nice view up there. Uh, and I'm doing some other photography for Old Poway Park. And we're gonna work on this one today, try to get some different colors in the bottom here, some shades of blue and see what happens. And what, do you have an idea what we can do with the sky? Maybe sometimes in the older videos of mine, I have done like a gradient of sunset colors. We can also go pure blue. I think I want to keep it. I don't, I don't want to do a sunset because it was taken more in the middle of the day. Yeah, I'd you can like, see the lights. Yeah, uh, I'd like to retain that. So some definitely different shades of blue and just want to see how that comes together, blending. Mm -hmm little darker at the top maybe coming down so i'm not really sure i want to see what happens here yeah yeah we can do that so let's have a look at the marshall floor oils that we have so this is my collection that i have so marshall photo oils are like dedicated oils very transparent for this kind of work they're actually called photo oils so um let's see lots of colors not every color is available anymore and I actually mostly get them from uh, Black Art online. And yeah, there's different kinds of blues. We have some bigger tubes here. Um, so this is Burnt Sienna, one of my favorite colors that I use a lot. And then for the sky here, we're gonna use the sky blue, which I lose, use a lot too, this kind of blue. Oh, really? That sky makes sense. blue for the sky? Yeah. Yes, exactly. Right. Well, that's the thing about these oils. So a lot of these colors are named after what what they're used for in the photos okay. um so sky blue obviously for the sky so but there's also for. like flesh and tan and chinese blue. chinese and burnt sienna. Well, that's actually a pretty common name also for regular uh, oils yes. um but you say uh, there's flesh and tan yes well not all of them are named after what they're used for because we can use them for a lot of things i mean even sky blue we can use it for the water here right yeah. Um, we don't have to stick exactly. Even the, the, some of the flesh tones I sometimes use to add a little bit of more touch of color to like brown structures. Um, you make the structures alive. Yes, exactly. Gray <laughs> What's, it, What's that? Gray background blue. Yeah, that's a very desaturated blue, that one. And then there's even Payne's Gray, I think, is in mm. here too somewhere. Yeah. That's a popular um, and white that. and oh yeah that's the nice thing about white so white obviously it's not translucent but you can use the white uh, to paint opaque with Marshall photo oils okay, if you add a little bit of touch of color of the other colors to the titanium white mm -hmm. that of Marshall photo oils it actually becomes opaque so you can also paint opaque colors with Marshall photo oils by using the white that they provide mm -hmm. Then we also have um, like PM solution. I don't use it that much anymore, but you can use it to remove colors. But if it's on photo paper, oh yeah, by the way, this is Fuji Crystal Archive photo paper. It's um, matte and it's perfect type of photo paper for coloring with these uh, oils. And what I was getting at, so you can remove the colors with this solution, but because of this, Paper works so perfectly. You, if you press hard enough or wipe hard enough, you can also remove it without using the PM solution. So I don't think we're going to need it. Or maybe we just show how you can use it. We can do that too. Okay. Then um, people back in the days used to put the colors on with uh, cotton balls. And I used to do that too in the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, but it leaves a lot of fluff behind. So there's all kinds of little hairs in my older work. And I mean, 
it's the it's the like character of it so you can think oh yeah that i can see it all little hairs but it's it's the way it's the technique um so Do i you still have those photos no they're all sold oh, okay. they're all in people's homes now they all have furry photos yes they have <laughs> little little furry photos <laughs> um but at some point i kind of wanted to move away from that so i started using um cotton rounds and these it's just also 100 percent cotton but it's woven so it doesn't give off the fluff so that's why i like to use these now mm. very now and then there's still something comes off but it's fine it's not a not a big deal so i use these for big surfaces like skies and water um, big structures and then there's also q-tips or cotton swabs which is for the detailed work this is also cotton um, you can add colors or you can remove colors with these and then there's the it's which are these um, and these are very pointy type of q-tips that's for the super detailed work and mostly i use this to remove paint and to add it although you could use these also to add paint Especially on my lifeguard towers, where um, there is one over there. Um, for the railing, um, I usually it's, it's these that I use to remove the paint uh, off the railing. Mm -hmm. So would you use that with like a lot of these like, real fine lines? You, you could. That's going to be a lot of work though yeah. if you want to color all of these separately. But as we're going to see, the nice because they're so translucent these colors. You can put in big swabs mm -hmm. of big areas of color one at, mm -hmm. at once with the cotton rounds. Right. And then where you don't want it, so if, say if you, a good example would be to color all these little flowers, you can remove this to, to remove it from okay. all the flowers and even okay. add a different color uh, to them. But we, we, we can see how that goes uh, later. Um, then I'd like to use color paper to put the colors on and gloves because oils are slightly toxic so you kind of want to protect your skin by using gloves touch the bare paint with your bare hand yeah you don't want to do that no you want to do that no yes you do <laughs> no i don't I do that. Okay. oh you do <laughs> oh yeah i don't i, I try to not to uh, yeah. sometimes it happens but um as long as you wash your hands yeah. afterwards yeah. okay there we go so this is a nice job so this was printed by a local lab here in Carlsbad. Um, and the way I like to start is I do the big surfaces first mm -hmm. because it's easier to um, do details later. So say if you do a lot of work putting your details and all, and then you're going to do big surfaces, you have a chance of going over it, messing up what you did before. Okay. So it's easier to correct a big surface that you did earlier than to mm -hmm. put in the details again. So, so I like to start with big surfaces and usually I start with the sky. Okay. So we can take some of the sky blue and then put a little bit. You don't need very much. If you need more, you just add more. Okay. Yeah, that's good. And these, this paint lasts for a very long time. Some of these paints I've had for, for years. The oil paint has, has a smell. Oh, yes, it's slightly smell to it. And it's funny because the worst one is this one. This is um, Aquamarine. Mm -hmm. This one has such a strong smell and it's more than any of the others. And I don't know why. It's probably because of the colors, a certain pigment. And does it matter which side you use? Yeah, I like to use the, the smooth side. side. Yeah. I, I, is it kind I, of... So yeah, you, you, you would use the, the, the smooth side of these. And sometimes I just use the other side to remove paint. But yeah, but you see, you see yeah, the fluff is coming right, off already. already. So you, you want to use the other, the smooth. But that's, see, this is how we learn here. Well, it's a lot easier to get the oil on the flat side. Yep. There right. you go. And then you just start on the top. Kind of like to go from um, side on the top and work my way down. Yeah. First, you put it on, mm -hmm. and then you go back later with a clean cotton round, and then uh, make it smoother. Mm -hmm. Now, would you I, work around the clouds, or just yes, go you over? work around the clouds? Okay. And now, my question would be, how do you know when you need more? I guess you you could actually add a little more, and and then and don't press so hard, okay. so you get a little bit more color on the paper. Okay. Yeah, 
it's like you you can try to anticipate what it feels like. To this was yes, yeah, and this is still my favorite way of coloring photos. I I love the Marshall photo oils on this type of photo paper. I'm trying to you know, I think over time I'll find my own you know the feel the technique. But it's like a, yeah, it's like well, you want to do circles, but I don't know if that's here. I'll, I'll show you how you can add some. If you don't push too hard, like like this. See? You can get a, a lot of color in here. And you probably want a little bit more color at the top here. I mean, it's your style. I mean, if you want it light, that's, no, no, of course, fine. But if you don't push that hard, like, like I'm doing now, I'm kind of very, yeah. very smoothly going over it, you can get a lot of color on it. And then now. take, and then slowly remove it? Yes. So then I work my way down. Go ahead. You take over again. Okay. And then later we take a clean one and we're going to smooth out all these little brush strokes that you can so what, see. Like what's the amount of time you have before? Oh, these last for a very long time uh, before it's dry. So it okay. takes, depending on the weather uh, and temperature, it, it can take anywhere from three days to seven days. Um, if you put it in the sun, um, which I do sometimes, it can be dry in a couple of hours. So not to worry when you see, you know, these big Yeah, don't blotches. worry about that. And even the clouds, it's okay to go over it mm -hmm. a little bit. We're going to fluff up the clouds later. Just trying to get it all on there. Yeah? I think I need more, yeah? Yeah, you probably pick, pick up some more. Even though, like, if you're gonna go dark to light, you're still putting the same color down below. Mm -hmm. Yep. So down here, it's kind of hard to go. And then, and it's okay to go over the clouds mm -hmm. here and there. You, you don't. The big clouds, it's okay to try to avoid them, mm -hmm. but it's really hard to avoid the small yeah, ones and the detail. So you just go over it, and and because it takes so long to dry, um, and it doesn't. The oil doesn't suck into the paper. Mm -hmm. you, you can easily remove it later. So don't be afraid of going over and the horizon. Even the horizon is okay to uh, slightly go over it. Just trying to get the the, the pressure. Here. And it's and it's even okay to have some blue on the mountains in the distance here because I mean mm -hmm. it's atmospheric perspective. Mm -hmm. Not too much on the cloud there. Eh? Yeah, at some point it like clicks and you and you know how hard you should press. Mm -hmm. and, So when do you know when you have enough on there? Um, you kind of, I guess, take a step back from it, look at it, and you can see you could add a little more here still, here, maybe here. I feel like I'm just... We're getting pretty close to um, smoothing it out. Yeah, you can see the, the gray scale, I guess you'd call it, underneath. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what it does too, right? So the, the black and white, the grays of the photo is what desaturates the color. So if you're very dark areas, so extreme here, it's very dark here. Mm -hmm. You get a very dark blue also, a very desaturated blue also. And white, like the clouds up here, you get the pure, pure color. Also, I just want to do like shapes around it. Well, and that's the other thing now that you mentioned shapes. You don't have to go like very realistic either, right? You could, and a lot of times with my work, I, I do work very realistically uh, because there are photographs underneath. But you don't have to. You, you, you could give it like a more abstract look to it. Mm. And you can do swirls like you have here. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there's yeah. no rules how, how it should be done. So if you, you are more of an abstract painter, right? Right. So you could leave it that way if that's the look that you want to go for. Yeah, if you, if you do want to leave it that, this way, that's fine. No, 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 but, no, no, but no. For, um, I don't want to leave it like Yeah, this. for the purpose of 
No, I don't want to leave them. Doing hand coloring photos I more realistically. Like, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, we'll take a clean one. So yeah. That's a clean. And if you want still to, you can add a bit of blue right there. Right here? Yeah. Okay. If you want to. Yeah, that part behind the clouds. Yeah, otherwise it'll be missing, won't it? Yep. Nice. Um, well, maybe I, I want to show you how I, how I do it. Mm -hmm. So I take also the smooth side, and then I start from the top. I don't push hard at all, and I kind of make very small circles. See how it smooths it out? So okay. this, this area here. Blend it? Yeah, so yeah, you're blending it really. See how nice and smooth it already is? Yeah. It's a little harder if you have a very thick blue. You, it's a little bit harder to do, but this is kind of the, the idea. See how smooth it is now on the top? Mm -hmm. And then the other way is to go Sometimes you can kind of see the circles at certain angles, but you can also go with like very, very softly, just smooth it out this way. And you kind of get rid of the circles if you see them. It's actually, I don't really see them now. No. They turn out pretty good, but this is another way of uh, doing it. The advantage of the circles is you kind of bring this part of the paint also over here. This is really what happens. See? So go ahead. Yeah, and don't push very hard. Don't push very hard. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it takes a little time to not press down. But you but you can see now the the swirlies are starting to disappear. Those are starting to disappear. You get a more realistic looking sky now. Yeah. And then, in order to get that gradient from, from darker, more saturated blue to less, mm -hmm. um, you, you just push harder as, as you go down. So it ret is it retaining that lighter blue because the white is underneath there? Yeah, but we can get rid of that later. Don't worry about the clouds yet. Got it. Just, just get the, the part of the sky nice and smooth. Hmm. Yeah, that's looking pretty good already. Yeah, and see, even here in the back, you, you could leave that. It's okay to have some blue here on the mountains. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, and if it gets too dirty, mm -hmm. the, the, you just take a new cotton round. Because now the more paint it picks up, the, you're really moving it around now. But you, especially when you go down here, you kind of want to remove it more. Let's take a handful. And then later, if you think, oh, I, I wish I had a little bit more blue up higher, you just add it on again. Yeah, that's a big difference with what we had earlier. Mm -hmm. yeah. Has this helped in any way since the from the beginning? It's absolutely helping, yeah. Yeah. I'd be at home doing it on my own, wondering, yeah. am I doing it? You know, how do I do this? Am I, am I doing it right? Am I doing it wrong? Am I pressing too hard? Am I not pressing too hard? We yeah, just, I like this look a lot now, the way it looks now. Dad, yeah. did you just teach yourself this? I did, yeah. Okay. It was a lot of trial and error. Mm. <laughs> I even tried a whole bunch of other media too. I've tried it with like markers, but that was mm -hmm. too permanent and you couldn't fix it. And, and then at some point I just ran into these Marshall photo oils. Discovered it. And then I still had to find out what paper it worked best with. Took a shortcut. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I think we're ready to uh, yeah tackle the clouds now. I like it. Um, okay. So and then again, take a clean new one, 
And now we're gonna bring back some of the white and, and the clouds, especially the top ones, the big ones. Still with the, yeah, the you, round? Yeah, the round, you take a, a smooth side again, mm -hmm. and now you really press hard. Okay. And But I would start towards the middle and work your way out. Okay. Because now you wanna kinda avoiding Trying. going over the edges, yeah, like that. Yeah, that's it. Now I can see how this is going. Okay. I wasn't sure how how it would come off. Because a lot of the paints I use, you can't do that. Yeah, yeah, that's a nice the combination of these oils and the paper. I like how you will allow you to do this. Get that, you know, that gray coming through. It's almost like a that's nice. You can also choose the, the like, different like camera. This annoying way close? Yeah, like that. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, you're not in this way. So you really do have to push down pretty hard yes, here. Yes, you do. And then um, we, you could use this, the, um, yeah. the PM solution. I don't but I yeah. just kind of stopped using it. Mm -hmm. If it helps when blending, you kind of want to hear nothing. Watch out that you're, you you're going it. over the edges. Oh, yeah. So you can add that back. Mm hmm So better to do less removal. Yeah, and, and I think it's okay to have a little bit of blue mm -hmm. on the edges. It's fine. I did like that. I like that look better than what, yeah. it looks, what it looks now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you just take maybe even one that you use already, mm -hmm. add it back I see. next to the cloud. Just lightly, yeah? Just li very light, and then again smooth it out. Well, you can use Q-tips, so yeah, yeah. let's just show that. So grab a Q-tip, and because now you have a little bit more control of mm -hmm. um, where you are. Yeah, that's it. That's the sound it makes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we hear that sound on your videos sometimes. I even like if there's a little blue here, it's like mm -hmm. a little glow on it. I like, so. I, I like that look. Well, here for the purpose of showing how this stuff works, mm -hmm. let's do it. Okay. So you never want to put a Q-tip directly in here. It's, it's just too much. So what you typically do is you grab a clean cotton round, the, the solution, put a little bit on here like this, and then you dip a clean Q-tip just in here because you don't need a lot. This is This is good enough. And then you just see how easy it goes oh, yeah. away now. But you see also the sharper edges. See yeah, that? Yeah, it's kind of running. So, so that's kind of why I yeah. stop using it. Yeah. And you still have to go back in and Blend kind of dab that away with yeah. uh, either a, a Q-tip or a, a cotton round. But you can see it see it get pure white here now. Yeah. And very fast and easy. Um, but if you just push hard enough with out this stuff, it still gets the job done. Yeah. Yeah, that takes that takes a lot. So you so you just take a clean one and kind of remove those hard edges again. That just makes it like pure white. These are oils, so you can mix them as, as you do with regular oil paints. You can create all kinds of colors. Oh. You do that? I do it sometimes, yeah. I think at one time I ran out of like aquamarine and I just mixed blue with some yellow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
nice to mix colors so you're not too predictable sometimes. Mm -hmm. For yourself. And I also, there's also black. I don't know if I have it. I think I do. Well, this is white. Over here. See, I'm getting my fingers this is, this on it. Titanium white. There's also black. Oh, here, yeah, ivory black. So with this, you can desaturate the, the colors a little more. So say if you have a very bright area and you, you, you decide you want a little less bright, you can just add a little bit of black to your colors, which oh. desaturates the paint itself. Mm -hmm. You're a problem like with your other hand. Um, the... We have to put it. Yeah, you have to be kind of. Be, I kind of hold it on the sides here, at the, on the edges, and mm -hmm. you know, so that it doesn't move. So I can like see my fingerprints on it. So do you have like a average time for certain sizes? I know it depends on the image. But... It depends on the image. It also um, sometimes smaller photos take me longer than larger ones, mm -hmm. just because the, the details get more pronounced. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm using more of the of the Q-tips than the cotton rounds. So what's your average? <sighs> For a small piece, smaller than this. How about probably, like an average around that size? Well, I mean, it, it totally depends on the size. If I have to call an average for everything, it would probably be an hour. That's an average for like that size of a piece. For this. Um, Probably, yeah, maybe an hour. Mm -hmm. mm. You're gonna be stuck here for an hour. How's that feel? I think it's already been an hour. <laughs> yeah, it feels, it feels like it's really been good. half an hour. Um, but it depends on how complicated you want to go, too. I mean, you can add, you could give different colors to all these flowers, and mm -hmm. that just extends the duration. I think these clouds are just... Or, or even putting in a gradient of colors in the sky, like a sunset, that takes a little bit longer. Like in the beginning, it would take me like three days oh, to, yeah? to do a big piece. That's what I feel like. Are you going to be stuck here for three days? <laughs> Maybe three days. <laughs> If you haven't done I think we can do this faster than that. <laughs> but like something like this, you know what bothers me is that like it's cut in half. Like I would rather, like I would take that cloud out. I feel oh, like I see. Better. Yeah, yeah. You know, when I shot, I mean, this I didn't yeah. shoot this with the intention of doing it. Oh, yeah. A photo oil. Yeah. Well, it doesn't bother me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Once I start noticing stuff, I'm like, okay. actually. I do the opposite. So if I if I do paint in a sky, mm -hmm. I kind of want to have a cloud in there that's kind of half. Oh yeah. In the image, yeah. Yeah, makes sure. it look more natural, balances it. So there you go. Everyone likes something different. Yeah. And then for the water, mm -hmm. um, that might be the next thing you want to do. We could use the same blue, and it will still look different because the water is it's much darker. There's darker grays here than the sky. So it will still look different, even if you use the same blue. But we could go with another one, like the Chinese blue, I think has a little bit, a little slightly more towards green. Yeah, like a, a darker, kind of like a dark blue green. And that's also the nice thing about these oils. If you don't like it, you just remove it and mm -hmm. start over. So I think I have three different blues. There's a sarge blue, which is a little bit more of a towards gray. And then there's a Chinese blue, which is more towards green, I think. And then I probably should get rid of these. <laughs> <laughs> Squeeze one more out. Yeah. And then I remember having an oh, ultra blue that I have here. I'm not sure what that was again. What's the gray? Which one's the gray blue? I think this is the more grayer one, the sarge oh, that blue. One, that one looks pretty blue. 
Chinese you know, blue. It's a weird name. Yeah, this is Sarge blue. You can just try it, and if you like it, then we'll use some more of it. Try it, you like it. So I'll just go all the way over. Yes, I would probably go here and here and here and here, but stay away from this area. And there's, when there's a very like white sheen on the water like you had here, you, you, you went over it, but you could have left it untouched too. But mm -hmm. it's fine, mm -hmm. you can do this. This part? Yeah, because that looked very white. So if you have a very big difference for surface, surfaces, like, like the water here, very white parts and darker, you 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 want to put it on lighter also on the the wider parts. Otherwise, it looks it just doesn't look right. If you put the same amount of paint here as you put over there, mm -hmm. so you kind of want to keep an eye on what's underneath it and go with that. Okay. And even sometimes you want to use slightly different colors between like very shadowy areas and very bright areas. Mm -hmm. And even if it's in reality the same color. And you, you, you probably want to do it slightly different in order to uh, get some realism back. Yeah, we, are, we can still fix that later. So, so maybe here and for this area. And then it's kind of the same procedure again. Well, not kind of, it is the same procedure. So you take again a clean cotton round and start smoothing it out. I would probably still add more color over here. But you know what, we'll just need a little more. Mm. Yeah, that's a lot, but that's a lot. Yeah, we'll, we'll fix that again. Okay. Actually, the nice thing of when you do it this way, mm -hmm. you, ha you have a lot of options in how you, how dark you want. Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> you can still, um, if you really like it dark and, and closer to the viewer, you can remove a lot here and just remove it less and less and less. And it's, I find it also easier to put on the colors very, like you did really, put it on thick and then remove it later to get it the way you want it. Instead of trying to already put the colors in at the darkness that, that you want it at. Mm -hmm. So this is actually pretty good. Then you can kind of play around with it a little bit more. Yeah, but I would, um, when you start smoothing it out, that's when I would uh, take a clean one mm -hmm. and start removing it and getting it the thickness that, that you want it. But don't push too hard, because now you're really removing it. Okay. Yeah, I can even use one of these that I use already. So I would just go very lightly like this. I might almost try not to touch it. Yeah, it's very lightly. Okay. Because the, the, sometimes the paints are more fluid than other times. I don't know exactly why that is, but this one feels very, very smooth to me. And it, it removes very easily. This one removes more easily than the blue we used earlier. Yeah, very, very soft. And then over here, you want to push hard. You want to remove the blue from the, the land. Mm, okay. A lot of this is figuring out pressure. Mm hmm That's a lot of that pressure, yeah. Because I could take it off. 
here. And then maybe on the edges a little bit here. Okay, yeah, that's making more sense now. This part I would just you do with a Q tip here. Come over, come over on this side here, and go really close. Like that looks like land to me, right? Mm -hmm. So could I use so for like that's the dock right there? You see how yeah. you see that? You, well, that I probably you wait till the. I, I would the, maybe do that with one of the ITs. You do that. Do you, you like? You wait till the end. Well, to do you, that? are you are you done smoothing it out, the water itself? No, not yet. Now, then I would still wait doing that because if, when you're gonna smooth it out, you will add blue again on on the dark. Okay. Yeah. So when you're done with the smoothing part, after that I would go in and remove it from the areas where you don't want it. It's like I don't want it to look like the paint is sitting on it. Yeah. Well, yeah, that, that, that looks to me that way. I just want to maybe yeah. smooth it out. Yeah, yeah. that part. And watch out, when you when you go back and forth, you, you leave some... Like this? Yeah. And yeah, you want to lift it. When okay. You, um, go on one. Yes, that's that good one, like that. Okay. Yeah, interesting. You don't want to bunch up the paint. Um, by not lifting your hand. There we go. Yeah. Right. So if you are you happy with it? Yeah, I think so. Then, then I would take now the Q-tips or the ITs and, and remove it from the dark hair and this area. And even the plants, the flowers. Okay. Also, I would like it if like this area, but yeah. this is a little hard, right? Because we have water yeah. and a lot of detail on top yeah. of it. I would make a little gradient of blue here. So now you have a kind of a hard edge. Mm -hmm. but I would re remove that edge and then it it becomes less obvious mm -hmm. yeah, I don't like that, that you have detail on top of the water. See, like like this, the oh, yeah. hard edge is gone now. Yeah, yeah that's like that. And then take a Q-tip for this area. And even the, the flowers here, I would definitely remove the blue from there. Would you use this or the... Yeah, that's... Uh, the, this is a pretty big surface here. I would still do that with a Q-tip here, but then the very tiny ones that are loose from the bigger area, I would do that with the ITs. So interesting. Yeah, like that. That. And then down here. Yep. So you can move pretty quick. Huh? Mm -hmm. And then here. I think it might be grass even. It's like a little uh, beach. It's uh, sand. Oh, it's beach, sand. sand. And that's that's the dock. Mm -hmm. There's usually boats there, and then you can. This is where the kids come to feed the ducks. one of these and then start over here and push away the paint from the from the dark at the pointy end. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then maybe these plants here. Yeah this looks this looks really bad right here. And then also use those for, for these plants here. The flowers. How 
long does this take to dry? I like it. Um, it's a lot of blue. And again, if you're going to add color, you can you can add some of that yellow in here to okay. disguise it a little bit more. Yeah. Blend mm -hmm. it in. And then I would now do the next largest surface, which would be like the land mass. Was is this green here or is it more brownish? It's, more, it's brown. Yeah, take the well, one, of, one of my favorite colors is the brown sienna. I use that a lot. So I would, unless you want something else. Yeah, let's do it. But I like to use brown sienna for um, this kind of stuff. So here we go with the brown sienna. Mm. Which really is like an orangey brown. Okay. And get rid of all these. Grab some new. So now, last time I put a, a lot on there. Yeah, don't put. Yeah, that's a lot of weight. That's a lot of weight. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, start on the edges here. So I'm used to using a lot of paint. Yeah, but this yeah. you don't want to use the, much the, at all. Yeah. Yeah, the, these tubes last for years. <laughs> and I, and you know, I, I always but still I put on too much here. This might have been too much already that yeah. I put on here. Mm, okay. But yeah, you'll that's see that that's, that's going to be a lot. <laughs> but you can still We're learning. Like, put put it like roughly like this area, and then you can when you take a clean one, and then you can smooth it out to, towards the edges too. In here, yeah, yeah, that seems to be a better amount than this stuff. You can still add some. With the side where you put a lot. And then when you have areas like this where you, you get your two mm -hmm. colors meet, yeah. I would stay away from the edge. Okay. And the very edge you do it with a Q tip, a Q -tip there. Otherwise you risk going over mm -hmm. and going into the sky with the new color. Creating more problems. Mm-hmm. In this case, I wouldn't mind. I would leave these the way they mm -hmm. are. I like, the, I like the blue on these furthest mountains. So would you ever apply? With the Q tip? Oh, yeah, I do, I do it all the time. Okay. Especially like areas like this where you have to add color yeah. very close to the edge. I do that with Q tips. Yeah. So. Yeah, see, now the blue is mostly gone. And then do the same thing here and, and here. Do you ever leave part of your photos just black and white? Like oh yeah, no. a lot. I'm thinking like, like these darks like here. Yes, because you wouldn't see the color here anyway that much. Uh, but even with sky, sometimes I just like to leave the sky uh, with that big piece over here. I just left yeah. the sky untouched. Yeah. And I sometimes, or sometimes, a lot of times I do it with these photos on photo paper too. Because I mean, the black and white photography looks mm -hmm. nice. On its own, but then you have like, like I'm thinking it would be cool to have all black and white, and then just some color on one, like you do with your lifeguard towels. Yes, uh, yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. So I, I call, just call it lifeguard towel and leave everything to, to untouched. Like less is more kind of thing. What is this? This is back here. 
that should be brown. Or... Yeah, I don't know what that is. Okay, Isn't like... it just a plant? Is it? Something, yeah, just... it could be, yeah, something that sticks out from the side here. I think it is a plant. It looks the same as this one here. Be too particular. So what was the color of, of the foreground here? Do you remember? Yeah, this this is a lot of green this is a lot of green and yellow. Green and yellow, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. It's probably not pure yellow, because that would be I think the 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 like the brush is green and then these flowers are yellow. Okay. Well let's are we ready to go to the next color or do you want to still add some brown here maybe? Oh yeah, I missed this. Because we can add a lot of green to it. Let's just grab the oxide green. Okay, so is that too much? Is that too much? Is this well, it's, it's, incredibly small blob too much? It, well, he, he, this is all green here. We're going to do this all green. Yeah. So we just probably cut them out. And then add some yellow patches in there. Grab another clean of these guys. Move this to the side. There you go. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it's like a little dollop. Like a little. Yeah, that's probably good. Yeah. All right. So another question is where to start. Yeah. It's on the edge here and work your way that way. Yeah, some of these colors are stronger than others, so I think you probably could add a little bit more green to it. So would you jump to the other side or stay in one place? I would still do this area here. And even even if you're going to add yellow to the flowers, mm -hmm. it's still okay. Because you, you kind of want some green in between here. So you, you, you ignore the white parts of the flowers now. Just go over it. And later when we go back in, you just put the color on top of where, where so you just want go the over, yellow. You're saying yeah, I would go over, over all of this. But of course, be careful here. Okay. Yeah, because now it fills in nicely the areas between the, the flowers. I gotcha. So you do like the circle. And I will add some more. Yeah, this is unless you like it. This very subtle. Well, no, color. But I got. I was worried because I did too, too much over there. Yeah, I think it could go a little more. Yeah. Yeah. So this was not too. Sorry, it was not too much. It was too small of a amount. I think so. And then again, you take a clean one, smooth it out, and then you kind of distribute. Okay. So this is the evenly. first part is just like getting well, it on. Get the color on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then the second part is always like making it. Okay. The, the, the thickness of the paint. Yeah, don't get caught up in trying to do multiple steps in one. Yeah, that's right. And yeah, it's like putting the color on okay. and then taking care of how strong you want the colors by removing yeah. uh, paint. Get it, get it off of this yeah, on there. That's right. <laughs> okay. Without messing up what you already did. Yes. Okay. I think I'm making progress. Slightly. Yeah, sure. I think this this looks this looks a lot better already now. Okay. Yeah, that makes more sense. Almost looks like my regular skin. Yeah, but doesn't 
This is a this is a lighter stroke, right? Yes. Yeah, so don't do it yeah. too hard. You have now been here for an hour. How do you feel? I feel great. Ready for this is a good lesson. Thank you, Roy. Oh, you're welcome. Learning a lot. I think I'm pressing too hard. No, I think it's pretty good. You're getting rid of the very uh Bloody spots. The colors are much more even now. Yeah, now comes the fun part, adding some colors to the flowers. Yeah. I yeah. guess it was always fun, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but I always like getting the, the details done. That kind of finishes the photo. Let's see, let's grab a good yellow. This is cadmium yellow. You don't need much at all. Wow. Yeah, this is probably going to be enough. And then you grab one of the Q-tips. I would take the regular mm. ones. And grab a tie you out. More? Uh, no, I would take less than the... Oh, wow. Yeah. Jeez. Um, but you can still uh, remove it on the paper here and then you can pick it up later. Yeah, like that. And now I would start, because this is still pretty tricky. We don't yeah. exactly know yet what it's going to look like. Mm -hmm. So start over here mm -hmm. and add some yellow to the flowers. And I, I would just dab it on really. Okay. Yeah, like that. There you go. And if you feel like it could have more, then you pick a little more pink. Yeah, you could probably get grab more now. Especially here. Yeah. And if you're happy the way that looks, I, I would also go into where the, where the water is. Yeah, I like that. So would it have a ten yellow and blue? Would this change? It, it would, if it makes this, of course it will turn uh, green. Right, but that's okay, okay because you already have a lot of green and I don't think it's a problem if part of it turns green. But you're not really mixing it anyway, you're just putting it right on. Yeah. That's really nice. Yeah, and it's nice to have a little bit of variation too. See, so you have a very bright yellow here, which is mm -hmm. good. In other areas, not so much. And so maybe I would do another very bright one right here like and, and vary it a bit. So it's not like the same color everywhere or the same value of each right. color everywhere. And also keep in mind, we don't have to go with what a origin, the original scene looked like, right? right? So what I would do, but it's up mm -hmm. to you, mm -hmm. I would add a little bit of orange yeah. still here on that. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking about that on the way here, about how, you know, you tendency to, you know, you're trying to remember the image that you took, mm -hmm. but then you're making this new yeah this new picture. and you can do you can do anything really right. uh, sometimes of course clients when they come to me they, they do expect a certain way the way it looks mm -hmm. and then i try to get it as close as mm -hmm. possible as they want it but sure if i do something like original for my own and it's not sold yet it's not a special order yeah i can go really different okay i'll make use of all this yeah yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, that looks really nice. 
Yeah, I mean, that's the nice creative part of it is you can do whatever you want. Let's see if we can grab some orange from this <laughs> terrible looking. Yes. I think over here. It's there it is. There it is. <laughs> This is this is this tube is actually from the 1900s. <laughs> yeah. Actually, it might be. Who knows? Yeah. Okay, let's see here. I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. Oh, don't like that. Um, the nice thing again, you can still remove it all if you don't like it. So when you remove it, so it's not so... Yeah, a little more subtle. Yeah. Maybe, you know, a little bit of the, like... Change it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like that part though, right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe that yellow. I would probably, if uh, if this was me, I would probably add some yellow in these flowers here. Yeah. Because now that's the blue is kind of overwhelming from the water that's on the flowers. But if you put the yellow in between here, it kind of gets rid of that effect. Kind of tough because they're, they're so thin. I would just put little dots here and there. This is probably the more challenging of the ones I brought over. Oh, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Okay. Just making sure. <laughs> <laughs> but that's good, right? You, yes. want, you want a little bit of challenge. Yeah, yeah. Right, a little bit of everything here. I mean, this is. Yeah, we have sky, we have water, we have something. Um, so you're saying, the water. I mean, yeah, we're just kind of blend it. Not, but not, not, do not swipes, just yeah, dots so. from the, from, yeah, dab it from above. Okay. Yeah, yes, like that. All the way up here? Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah maybe that. even here, because I see they go all the way here too. See, if I was, if I didn't have you here guiding me, I, I'm not sure I would and think, oh, I should, I should not do that. And now I'm going over the water. Yeah, that's fine, because now it kind of becomes part of the plant. So, and, and it's more of an impression what you look at it. So when I look at this, I see, oh yeah, there's plants and flowers in so front of the water. It's much better now, isn't it? Isn't it, everyone? Yeah, I like this look. Even if you, oops. I like the dark, the, it almost looks, so you've got this here and then there's this other bush. See the difference in the leaves? 
Well, do you want to... I think I'll take it. I think I'll take it off of this. Okay. Well, what, what I like to do too, I like to like desaturate my greens with a little bit of burnt sienna. Okay. And you can get some darker yeah. desaturated greens in the front. So let, let's, yeah, yeah, we haven't done that yet. Let's do some mixing here. So we'll grab a little bit of, you know, over here. Mm. So we'll grab a little bit of more green. And we still have a lot of burnt sienna. So uh, we'll grab a Q-tip to mix it. So let's, let's grab a little bit of this and then kind of mix it in here. Look, now we have a, a little bit of a, of a darker green, yeah. of a more desaturated green. Mm -hmm. So let's try it. Yeah, like that. Of course, if you don't like it, then we'll remove it. But especially in the foreground, you want some more intense mm. colors yeah. like that. And then you yeah, grab one of those, smooth it out a little bit. And now we kind of have a, like a darker green in the front. Is it better? It's better. It can give it gives dimension from here but to what's kind of lays behind. Mm -hmm. I think it looks good. Yeah. Yeah. Just this do this one? Uh, That's tricky. Oh the flower? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Leave it. Yeah, I would probably use the way it is. Or even take what about the... these flowers right here. Or maybe add some green here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very cute to it. Okay. You know, if you're going to frame it, you actually might not see this part. Mm -hmm. Because the frame always goes slightly over it, but that would be good. You could still do it. Just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Just think it would too. Something like this. There you go. Yeah. I don't know if there's anything going on there. Yep, yeah, that's it. Look, it's actually these kind of small details that actually makes Makes it look really good. I'm thinking like, I don't know. I think there's nothing on the dam. I think okay. you're good with the dam. You can do like, see these little trails. Yeah, you yeah, probably could. Well, this, uh, this trail in particular runs up. And then you hike, it goes up here, comes around, and drops you all the way down. Oh, on the other side of the dam? Yeah, it goes all the way down on the other side. This this is the dam. You go all the way down. It's a pretty significant decline there. And then you come around, I think it's like 2.3 miles total. Huh. So you go around here, you pop up over here. Oh, you walk all around the lake. Mm-hmm. You walk around the lake. This is where it continues. This is where you come out at, right here. And it continues here. And then you have a choice. You can go this way, which is shorter, or you can go around back mm -hmm. this way. And you end up where I took the photo, coming back around. Yeah, that's nice. So a lot of people. Gotta wait for my photo oils <laughs> to come from. Yeah. Wherever. Wherever they come from. Yeah. So here we are. 
top of Poway Lake. Lloyd Kirkhoff helped me out today, saved the day. So what do you think? Do you, do you like to work with the oils? I think I do. It's going to take some practice. Yeah, especially the, the pressure you mentioned, right? Yeah, the pressure is definitely a big part of this. So, we'll see. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Well, hope you like the video. Hit that like button. And it's a rule. We have to say this, right? No. Subscribe to my channel. <laughs> it's not a rule. <laughs> it is. It's a rule. No, it's, it's not. It's a YouTuber rule. No, it's not. I've seen plenty of YouTubers that don't say that. Oh, okay. It's not a rule. <laughs> Hit like if you like the video. Yeah, exa work. exactly. Okay, well, that was it.